A few months ago, an engineer bought a small but expensive Stirling engine model. It was meant as a demonstration piece for a larger project, a Stirling engine-powered bicycle. The model was beautifully made and fascinating to watch, yet it came with one persistent problem. Like all Stirling engines, it relied on a temperature difference between its top and bottom plates to operate. Without that, it simply would not move. There were a few ways to create that temperature gradient. A cup of hot water could make it spin rapidly, but only for a short while. Sunlight could also heat the top plate enough to run the engine all day. But this was not a reliable option in the United Kingdom, where cloudy skies are the norm. Out of options, the engineer even tried using the heated bed of a 3D printer to power it, a solution that worked but felt absurdly overcomplicated. A more elegant and low-maintenance power source was needed. After some thought, the idea came to use ice. Of course, ice itself could not generate energy, but it could serve as a cold sink. When when placed on top of a block of ice, the Stirling engine could draw heat from the surrounding air. The difference in temperature between the warm air, heating the top plate, and the ice cooling the bottom plate would be enough to keep it running. The concept was simple. The ice would slowly melt, and the energy from the surrounding air would sustain the engine. However, a block of melting ice would create puddles, and that was not ideal for a desk. To solve this, the engineer designed a compact 3D printed stand that could hold four ice cubes beneath the engine. The stand was built with hollow internal cavities to act as insulation, slowing the melting process. The result was surprisingly effective. The bottom plate stayed cool enough for the engine to spin smoothly for a long time, and the water stayed neatly contained inside the tray. Yet stopping there would have been too easy. Driven by curiosity, the engineer decided to refine and test the setup more thoroughly. To compare results fairly, the ambient temperature needed to be controlled. The warmth of the air affects how fast the ice melts and how hot the top plate becomes. Without a temperature-controlled chamber on hand, the engineer repurposed a Prusa Core 13D printer. By placing a cardboard sheet over the heated bed to prevent direct heat transfer, and setting the printer's ventilation system to maintain a steady 25 degrees Celsius, the printer became a makeshift testing chamber. The experiment began with four standard ice cubes. The engine was set in place, and the stopwatch started. The flywheel spun steadily for more than three hours, three hours and 22 minutes to be exact. This exceeded expectations by a wide margin. Still, curiosity demanded more testing. What would happen with a single large block of ice instead of four small cubes? The engineer froze the entire tray as one solid block, increasing the ice mass from 74 grams to 130 grams while reducing its surface area. This new setup significantly slowed the melting process. The engine ran for 6 hours and 17 minutes, nearly double the previous duration. Basic calculations showed that melting 130 grams of ice required about 43 kilojoules of energy, roughly equivalent to 12 watt hours. Spread over 6 hours, that implied an average power transfer of about 2 watts, a surprisingly high figure for such a tiny, efficient engine. It suggested that a large portion of heat was being lost through the plastic body of the stand, rather than being effectively used by the engine. To test this, the engineer printed a second tray with no internal insulation, and ran the same experiment with 130 grams of ice. During the test, small droplets appeared on the tray's outer surface. Initially, they looked like leaks from the 3D print, but after observation, they turned out to be condensation. The engine stopped after 3 hours and 45 minutes, two and a half hours less than the insulated version. The result confirmed that insulation made a major difference. To be sure about the suspected leak, thin-walled test cups were printed and filled with water. Even after several hours, the outsides remained dry. This proved that the condensation came from moisture in the air, not from leaking through the plastic. The engineer also discovered that thinner 3D printed walls could remain watertight, allowing for more air gaps and better insulation in future versions. To keep the design practical, a size constraint was introduced. The base could not exceed 120 mm in diameter and 40 mm in height, matching the footprint of the prototype. Before printing more models, the engineer wanted to know how little temperature difference the Stirling engine actually needed to run. With temperature sensors attached to both plates, the engine was heated from below using the printer's bed. It turned out the engine could run with only a 10 degrees Celsius difference, 
and the absolute minimum required was around 6.5 degrees Celsius. Since ice provided a difference of roughly 25 degrees Celsius between the cold bottom and the warm air above, it was clear that much of the temperature gradient was wasted. The engine was getting more cooling than necessary. Originally, the plan was to add custom CNC machined heat sinks and thermal pads to improve heat transfer to the ice. But the test showed that the engine actually needed the opposite. It required less heat conduction to make the ice last longer. To understand what happened once the ice melted, a test was run using cold water instead. Even as the water warmed to about 9 degrees Celsius, still 16 degrees Celsius below the ambient temperature, the engine continued to spin smoothly. That revealed that simple cold water could sustain the motion long after the ice was gone. This inspired a new idea. Letting the engine run on the cooling effect of melting ice without direct contact between the ice and the engine. A new design was drawn where a block of ice rested on a grill, insulated from the engine by a removable top plate. As the ice melted, water dripped down, cooling the trapped air in the surrounding side cavities, which in turn absorbed heat from the engine. However, this introduced a new problem. Water poured into the grill area while freezing, making it impossible to form solid blocks of ice in place. To work around this, a flexible TPU mold was 3D printed to shape the ice block separately. The mold worked, but the expansion of freezing water caused the bottom to bulge, trapping the ice inside. Extracting it was messy and frustrating. Even adding a slight taper might not have solved the practicality issue. Daily handling of molds and water would make regular operation inconvenient. A simpler approach was followed. A new version of the design turned the mold concept upside down. The ice could be frozen inside a cup that doubled as an insert for the tray. Once frozen, the cup could be flipped and mounted upside down on small pegs, allowing meltwater to drip down into the cavities below. On paper, this seemed ideal, but in practice, it wasn't. Each test cycle took almost a full day, hours to print, hours to freeze, and hours to test. The first trial with this setup yielded disappointing results. Only 4 hours and 51 minutes of runtime, over an hour shorter than the earlier record. The data showed that performance had decreased as the designs became more complex. Reflecting on this, the engineer realized that the focus on air circulation and indirect heat transfer had missed a key factor. Air is a poor conductor of heat. The air gaps meant to moderate cooling were actually reducing efficiency too much. Meanwhile, PLA plastic, the material used for the prints, conducts heat far better than air, about six times more effectively. Most of the heat from the engine was traveling through the solid walls of the tray instead of through the controlled air gaps. Once the ice separated from its supports, the engine quickly lost its cooling and stopped. It was time to simplify again. The next version returned to the basics, a large block of ice, strong insulation, and minimal contact between cold and warm surfaces. The new tray design used a central cup to form the ice block, supported by small fins that reduced heat conduction. Around the cup was a wide air cavity, with more hollow sections inside the walls to trap heat and slow melting the Stirling engine would rest directly on the cup's rim to allow some heat to flow down, but not too much. When the test began, the setup looked promising. The thermal camera showed that after two hours, the outer wall temperature was about 17 degrees Celsius, while the top near the engine remained cooler. The air cavities were clearly doing their job. The test ran unattended for several hours. When checked later, the webcam footage revealed a final runtime of 6 hours and 18 minutes, just one minute longer than the earlier best result from the simple, solid block design. It was an amusing coincidence, and in a way, a satisfying conclusion. After all the complex ideas, calculations, and failed prototypes, the most effective solution was nearly identical to the first one. The experiment had circled back to simplicity. In the end, the project demonstrated several lessons. 
A Stirling engine doesn't require a large temperature gradient to run efficiently. Ice provides more than enough difference, so insulation and limited contact are more valuable than fancy cooling structures. Air cavities outperform thick plastic when it comes to trapping heat, and practicality matters as much as performance. A compact, reusable ice tray that fits neatly under the engine and doesn't leak makes the whole setup functional for everyday use. Now, with a single frozen cup and a well-insulated stand, the Stirling engine can run quietly for more than six hours at room temperature, powered by nothing but the warmth of the air and the slow melting of ice. It sits on a desk, spinning smoothly, simple yet mesmerizing. A perfect blend of engineering precision and creative curiosity.